All right, welcome everyone to our second installment of Scientists Talk Movies. I am Morgan Matson, a PhD student at UC Davis. Hopefully you guys saw my talk this past Sunday. Uh, if you didn't, it's still on the YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out. So today I am joined by Fatima Hussein, another graduate student at UC Davis. She is <clears throat> a little bit weird, don't worry about it. But essentially she and I are going to be having a conversation about how movies have or have not influenced our lives and our science decisions um, and stuff kind of like that. So Fatima, if you would start off please by just, I don't know, talk about yourself. Tell me, tell me about yourself. You got it, Morgan. I would like to point out that I'm the good kind of weird but you'll see why. <laughs> All right, so um, my name is Fatima. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate, UC Davis, chemistry, woo. Okay, so if I start thinking about how science influenced me, uh, when I was a kid, I was really into cooking and baking and it would just amaze me how you could like mix like eggs and flour and milk and how you have pancakes and you can make them taste so many different ways. Always amazing to me. Uh, as I grew older, you know, into my teenage years, I started watching a lot of CSI, and I thought it was really cool how much information they could collect from a crime scene from a piece of hair using types of light. I was like, what is this? Uh, so to answer my curiosity, uh, I moved to the U.S. in 2012. I got my Bachelor's of Science and Chemistry from San Jose State University. Go Spartans! <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Over there, I was really interested in analytical chemistry because that's where I got to use all these instrumentations. And I was like, wow, you can actually collect a lot of information from a very small sample size. And it was crazy. Like when we did the experiment of finding out how much vitamin C is in oranges, like we act, our professor gave us an actual orange and we used the juicer that we have in the kitchen to extract the orange juice, you know, and I was like, oh my God, you're not allowed food in the lab. Like that was like one thing for me. I was like, why is there food in the lab? This is how they really do it. So it was really cool. And then like in organic chemistry, when I got to use that uh, UV light to look at the TLC plate to see the different separations, I was like, oh my God, this is exactly how they do it in CSI. <laughs> and now when I teach organic chemistry, I'm telling all my students, hey, you're going to do this like they do in CSI. And I'm like, do they watch CSI? Like, I don't know anymore. Is that a thing that kids in this generation do? I don't know, but that's what influenced me anyways. And then as I was doing research in undergrad, I was like, oh my God, I wanna keep doing this. So that's why I came to grad school at UC Davis. And I'm getting my PhD in analytical chemistry, surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, but I work more with water samples now and analyzing different contaminants in water and some that you can't even see. Again, even though I've been doing this for four years now, it's just boggles my mind, the kind of things that are in water. But that's just me. Tell me about your not so weird self, Morgan. Hey, I never said that I wasn't weird. I just said that you were also weird. Um, just, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I think CSI has is still on. I'm not really sure. I just, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, as for me, I grew up watching a lot of really, really bad sci-fi movies. I mean, some of them were good, but I also watched a lot of really bad sci-fi movies. A lot of them were definitely about like the apocalypse and zombies and stuff like that. So I that really interested me in uh, biology a lot and specifically like virology and kind of like genetic engineering. And it's like, oh, well, how did all these people wipe out the earth or make zombies and stuff like that? So that always heavily influenced my decision to be interested in the field of biology. And so I went to the University of Virginia in, in 2012, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and I ended up doing a lot of research on proteins inside of bacteria. And that really started to interest me. Like the more I learned about and the more classes I took, the more I kind of started to stray away from my interest in biology and viruses because of zombies, but more towards you know, like, hey, what can we actually use this really interesting information about biology for, you know, not to make zombies or other apocalyptic like movies, but how can we actually help society uh, with these like very tiny creatures? And so I got my bachelor's in biochemistry. So I really like biology and I really like chemistry. So I didn't have to choose between them. I could get a joint degree. Uh, which I think a lot of people don't actually know. You don't have to choose one thing that you love in this world. You can actually do a whole bunch of different things. 
And so with that degree in biochemistry, um, I like really, really loved my undergraduate research. I really loved working in research and trying to think of how we could use, again, these small creatures to help the world. And so when I was looking for my next step in life, I decided to go to grad school also at UC Davis. And I encountered my now boss, Shota Tsumi, who genetically engineers microbes to turn them into production hosts to make high value commodities or very important everyday commodities like biofuels, plastic precursors, uh, all sorts of like really interesting things that we don't have to rely on petroleum for. And that really sparked my interest because I was like, oh my gosh, I can still work with my lovely bacteria and I can do something helpful that isn't making zombies or other things like that. Uh, so that's definitely how like my scientific science background in movies has influenced me. Uh, if wow. that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I did not know that about you, Morgan. Very interesting. I'm not very familiar with the zombie genre. So like what types of movies did you watch about the apocalypse? Mm, that is a really good question. So, you know, there's some classics like uh, Night of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead. You know, actually thinking about it, I think with zombie movies, you could just think of any word and put it in front of of the dead and then it's a zombie movie. Like, I think there was a Diary of the Dead. Not, yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think just any, any word, just put it in front of of the dead and somebody's probably made a zombie movie about it. But also like 28 weeks later and yeah, just a lot of different zombie movies wow. like that. Um, and you know, actually, I have a question about you for CSI. So would you say, you know, you said like, oh, wow, they did this just like on CSI. Do you think that a lot of the stuff you've seen in CSI shows or movies of that nature relating to anal analytical chemistry is actually accurate? I mean, I don't remember the vivid details from the show. And honestly, they'll fast forward through that part of the TV show where they put music in the background because, you know, that's what makes science interesting. You gotta animate it. But um, from what I remember, like, yeah, like you can definitely use UV light to find like fingerprints and traces of proteins and stuff. So I know that part's true, but they always skip out on some details in the show. Like they have to, like sometimes I watch stuff about science on TV and movies and I'm like, there's no way they did that that quickly. You know, like I could do it that quickly if it was that easy, you know, like this is not an easy job. Like it takes time. It takes a lot of failure before you get something to work and you get that, oh, result I was looking for. You know, that's got to happen to you sometimes with movies. Like there's no way you're like, oh yeah, I'm satisfied with the science. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. First off, you know, again, like science takes a really long time. We can't come up with a miracle cure in a month or a week or however long it takes. There's a lot of failure. Um, and that kind of makes me think like in in our PhDs, I feel like I haven't become so much of a super intellectual. Like I don't necessarily think I know a whole ton of things. Like I'm very specialized in my field, but what I have been taught is how to deal with failure and like mm -hmm. how to think critically mm -hmm. about like moving forward or just kind of things in general. Um, Cause I know like when I watch movies, I'm the same way. Like even if I'm not an expert at that particular field in science, I'm like, what? That, that's not how that works, right? Yeah. Like, I can't believe it. And you know, then I'll go like, maybe you look it up on Google, try and find some actual scientific resources or you know, maybe I'll just like hit up a friend. Like I'll be like, hey, Fatima, like they said in this movie that they could find this contaminant in water. Can you really do that? Like, I don't know. I feel like I have started to be more suspicious, not suspicious of the world, but think critically. Like, have you, have you noticed the same things? You're a little bit younger than me in the field. <laughs> Okay, not, not that much younger, I guess, but th that's, I think, a very important lesson that grad school has taught all of us. Like, when I watched these movies before, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, maybe true, maybe not. But, like, in grad school, I've definitely learned to think more critically about everything, movies, TV shows, things you see in the news. Like, that was, like, me when I watched The Martian, for example. Like, I was like, is this guy really going to grow potatoes on Mars and then survive on them? Like, I was like is this real? Is this not? But then, you know, science is super like interdisciplinary, right? Like I can't just ask one person, like there's so much that goes into growing a potato, for example, mm -hmm. there's the soil science, there's the vitamins in the potato, there's everything you need to grow a potato in soil. Like it's, it's beautiful and complicated at the same time. 
but I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you're you're so right. And I think that's also something a lot of people don't realize is even if you ask about like a single topic, like even if you ask me about my specific research, I'm not going to know everything about it. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like I'm very I've learned to be confident in saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know yeah. about that. Here, this is kind of what I think might be right, but mm -hmm. I really don't know. Or even just be like, oh, you know who you should talk to about that is this person. Um, so I actually have really enjoyed that. Like the more I've been in grad school and the more I've interacted with other scientists, mm. the more I've loved the fact that like you rarely meet a good scientist who is arrogant. It is like very rare to meet a scientist who mm like doesn't just want to talk and communicate and be like hey I don't know this like can you teach me about this like hey can you talk to me about this like your yeah. research is so different than mine mm -hmm. um but you know we can still have really good conversations um about all sorts of different things whether it's like movies or science and movies and stuff like that yeah so true I've had the same experience like I've emailed people I've never met to be like, hey, I got your email from this person. They told me, you know, how to analyze these microbes under a microscope. Can you help me out? And they literally emailed me like the entire protocol. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you have never met me. You don't know who I am. But like, people are very helpful. And I'm like, at the end of the day, we're all scientists, right? We all carry that curiosity, that knowledge, that passion to like push science forward and share it with everyone. So there are good parts of the job too. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, even just us talking on kind of on this uh, virtual platform and talking about our science and our experiences, that's also pushing science forward. Mm. And yeah, so I, I think it's really interesting. I don't, all of the portrayals I have seen in science, in all my science sci-fi movies that I've watched, I don't think any of the portrayals of scientists have really been accurate. Uh, they're just kind of like blown up and it's like, ah, I mean, I've definitely met some arrogant people. I've met some not <laughs> arrogant people. I, there's, you know, scientists are normal people, right? There's a whole bunch of different types mm. of us, but yeah. you're right. Like we all kind of have that inherent curiosity and want to seek out the truth about a situation. And we've just been taught how to do that in an effective manner while making sure we address all the relevant things. But yeah, I don't know. This is really interesting. I like how we've gone from talking about movies and then like issues we found in movies or kind of like questions in movies to just talking about the experience that is being a scientist and also like getting your PhD because it is an interesting experience getting your PhD and being a graduate yeah. student. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Fatima. I really hope that we can do this again. You know, maybe you can clear up some time in your schedule for me, although I know you're really busy. I'll, I'll get back to you, you know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that really means a lot to me. And definitely. for and for our viewers out there, uh, definitely check out the next installment of Scientist Talk Movies and all the other fun stuff that we have coming up for you. Mm -hmm.